Good afternoon. We welcome a very dear and honorable Jason Ken, Federal Minister of Employment and Social Development and Minister of Multiculturalism. Thank you, Minister, for joining us today. My name is Tahir Slambora. I'm Secretary General of CPCMO, a coalition of progressive Canadian Muslim organizations. A member of the nations of our coalition believe in separation of religion and politics, gender equality, one law for all, freedom of expression, and education against radicalization. Ladies and gentlemen, today's event is meant to draw Canadian strategy to combat ISIL ideology and jihadi recruitment in Canada. We have invited Canadian community leaders of diverse background. First of all, actually, most of speakers are already here. I'll just name them. We have Honorable Sayyid Nabir Abbas, Center Islamiki, Lebanese, Montreal. <laughs> we don't have yet uh, Reverend Majid Al Shafi. I hope he'll join us soon. We have Honorable Lal Khan Malik, National President, Ahmadiyya Muslim Taiwan Camp. <laughs> we have Kamran Bukhari, renowned author and scholar, works for Sapphire. <laughs> we have our friend Tom Coogan, security expert, and thank you for joining us. A friend from Yazidi organization, he lives in uh, Buffalo these days, and uh, he couldn't be. And uh, we have gentlemen representing Yazidi organization. <laughs> we have gentlemen Sartik Kadai, Kurdish House, Canada, he's the chairman. <laughs> Another gentleman hopefully uh, join us soon from Zorostian Kurdish community. Dr. Zoster Solomon, and we'll wait for it. I welcome uh, Martin Sampson, Director of Communication, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Thank you. A very dear Imam Robert Haft. Thank you, sir. And a very dear leader, Ms. Salma Siddiqui, President of CPCMO. Ladies and gentlemen, now I hand over today's moderation to very renowned author and a good friend, Ernest Hass. Please. Thank you everyone for coming out this afternoon for a topic which is so important to all of us. I just want to explain the process. I have the um, honor, thank you to the coalition, to be your master ceremonies. I also may need your help if I have to ask the speakers to stop speaking, but we have a process for that. We have people with a sign giving you a three minute and one minute time signal, and then there'll be self-discipline, um, except for the minister when he speaks at the end. <laughs> and, um, if they go past the eight minutes, I'll stand up. And if they still do that, I'll, I'll hit the bell. Just like they do in the Academy Awards, you know, when they speak, they start singing. Everybody can clap, okay? <laughs> I'm going to, uh, in between speakers, just take 30 seconds. It's just a quote that's from one of my latest books uh, that might fit with their, about from their bio. For to hear, Gora, um, I have a quote. Have you looked beneath the surface to find the solution, like the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And I'm going to be introducing Mark Sampson. And uh, to do that, I want to say that uh, each ripple can become a wave to wash away unresolved conflict from the shores of injustice. And everybody in this room is a ripple, including the first speaker, Martin Sampson, Director of Communications <clears throat> for the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. He is CJ's Director of Communications and Marketing. In this role, he manages a team of dynamic communication professionals 
who together provide strategic communications, media relations, and public relations <coughs> to CJ's management staff and lead leadership. And the one quote I thought of for you, sir, was you're gonna help us learn how to avoid human beings fulfilling the model, why make things difficult, when with a little bit of effort, we can make them impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Just one second, I'd like to recognize the presence of three honorable member parliaments here. Bob Deckert, very grateful for it. <laughs> and I'm very to uh, MP Honorable Lizon. Thank you for joining us. Sir. And uh, a very uh, dear and uh, great uh, friend, uh, member parliament, uh, Honorable Bradbutt. <laughs> well, uh, first I'd like to thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Uh, this is an important discussion. Uh, I would like to thank my co-panelists, uh, and particularly Tahir Gora, who's a great friend of our community, a great friend of our organization. Um, this is an important discussion. It's about an issue that impacts us all as Canadians. So we're here to contribute to a successful interfaith dialogue. I'll tell you a little bit about CJA. CJA is the advocacy agent of the Jewish Federations of Canada. Our job is to advance issues that are important to the Jewish community. Uh, we uh, uh, do not claim to represent all Jews. Uh, the Jewish community, like the Muslim community, is not monolithic. There are many different viewpoints. Uh, but we do endeavor to advance issues that are important to the 150,000 Jews who are affiliated through the Federation system. The Jewish community is uh, very interested in this issue for a number of reasons. The rising tide of Islamic extremism has a direct threat against Jews. We see rising anti-Semitism uh, manifested violently by radical Muslim extremists across Europe and the Middle East and here in Canada too. For example, at a number of uh, so-called pro-Palestinian rallies this summer, we saw violent attacks on Jews in Calgary, we saw the, the Hamas flag flown at a rally in Ottawa, and we saw Hezbollah and ISIS flags flown uh, at a rally in Montreal, and this is obviously deeply concerning to our community. I just came back from a conference in Prague where I met with uh, 51 representatives uh, from Jewish communities around the world and some of the stories that they relate to me were frankly quite chilling. Um, again, this is a grave problem for our community. But we also understand that the rise uh, of radical extreme and violent Islamism is a threat to moderate Muslims as well. At home and abroad, and we also realize that it is a threat to Canadian values and to Canadian security. We are all Canadians. We share these core values. We also share the benefits of being Canadian and we share the responsibilities of being Canadian. Now, it's important to note that at the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs and frankly within the broader Jewish community that we distinguish between political Islam, violent political Islam and the religion of Islam. And we know that there are many reform-minded Muslims, like many of you here today, who are more violent and who are mortified by what is being done in the name of Islam. We also recognize that the Muslim community is in an extremely difficult position. And the reality is that while we all have a responsibility to fight this rising tide, to neutralize the threat of homegrown terrorism, Perhaps unfairly, there is a larger burden placed on the Muslim community to defeat this. You are on the very front lines. And we recognize that one of the challenges facing progressive Muslims is the level of credibility that the progressive community enjoys within the broader Muslim community. And so I guess our main message to you is that we are absolutely committed to providing the Muslim community, the progressive Muslim community, with forums and platforms that can help to enhance your credibility within the broader Muslim community so that your voice can be heard in this incredibly important debate. We hope that with that enhanced credibility in hand, progressive Muslims can demonstrate to their co-religionists the value of engaging and becoming more fully integrated with the broader Canadian society. 
We also believe that there is no contradiction or tension between maintaining or preserving a sense of cultural and religious identity on the one hand and integrating more fully within Canadian society on the other. Muslims, as have Jews, must reject the notion of a zero-sum game, the either-or position. It can be both. And I look around this room and I know that you know this. So our ask is that moderate Muslims of good faith take action. Your voice needs to be heard clearly saying that this ideology cannot have a stage in mosques or any other place where Muslims gather. And we know that is what has brought this group together here today. But speaking out I don't think is enough. The Muslim community needs to push back more firmly because you are at the absolutely best defense mm -hmm. against this rising tide. And we encourage you to accelerate the rate of integration with your co-religionists into Canadian society. And we want to offer our support in whatever way we can to make that happen. Now, the Jewish community began to really thrive uh, in Canada when it fully began to integrate. And now the Jewish community in Canada is, uh, is part of the Canadian fabric. Uh, and very, very proud to be part of that fabric. I would be remiss if I didn't say that we at Sija, and frankly across uh, most of the Jewish community, absolutely condemn acts of Islamophobia. We have no tolerance whatsoever for any act that is aggressive towards our friends in the Muslim community. And we've been very quick to speak out and issue statements against uh, blatant acts of vandalism and racism in places like Cold Lake, Quebec, and in Ottawa. It is absolutely intolerable to us and we will continue to speak out against it. So again, in whatever way we can, we want to provide progressive Muslims like yourselves with legitimacy so your voices are heard in this debate. We very, very much thank you uh, for uh, bringing us all together today for this incredibly important dialogue and we look forward to a productive discussion. Uh, and uh, again, from us to you, thank you and we look forward to working together. <laughs>